In this video, I'm going to be comparing the two best 4K streamer boxes you can buy. That is the Apple TV 4K and the 4K Nvidia Shield. And to me, it's not even a question. They have the cleanest user interfaces, the most powerful internal hardware, and the best overall support for apps. If you're looking for the best TV streamer box around, it's definitely between these two. But the question to me is, which one is better? So to find out, I'm going to start off by talking a little about the hardware in each device, demo and compare their on-screen UIs, discuss the main feature differences between the two, and then go over the important pros and cons of using each system on a day-to-day -day basis. I also wanted to mention that I've been an Apple TV user exclusively over the last couple of years, meaning it's been the only media box I use on the screens in my house. But I wanted to try out the Nvidia Shield because it gets great reviews, people seem to really love it, and just to see if it offered a superior streaming experience enough to justify switching from an Apple TV. So I just want to start by taking a look at both of the hard hardware boxes themselves and just going over some of the features. Um, you can see the Apple TV is just one solid uh, square box. Um, it's pretty dense and pretty f premium feeling, I think, if you ask me. And the reason is because the actual um, power bricks built inside. I'll show you about that in a second. But as far as the ports go, it's very simple. You just have on the back, uh, there's the AC adapter here, the AC port here, a single HDMI port, and then uh, Ethernet cable, is, of course, has Wi-Fi as well. Um, what's more important, what in my opinion makes or breaks a media streaming device is its remote. But we'll talk about the remotes a little bit more in just a second. Now here is the Nvidia Shield TV and you can see it's a little bit more of a edgy design you might say. Um, it's kind of a bit of a personal preference. This does light up green when you have it on um, and uh, when the machine's powered on. You can turn it off in the settings of course but um, I think it looks pretty cool. And you see on the back there is the AC port, uh, uh, you can see, and an Ethernet port, HD, single HDMI port, and two USB 3.0 ports, which is nice because that makes the whole unit expandable. You can plug in thumb drives or external USB drives. Uh, the standard TV, uh, NVIDIA Shield TV, 16 gigabytes. Can't remember if they offer bigger storage, I'm not sure, but the Apple TV base is 32 gigabytes for the base model, and you can get up to 64 gigs. And that's really all there is to the uh, NVIDIA Shield. Now, the last thing I did want to mention is, as I was saying, the Apple TV is a little bit heavier. And that's because the power bricks built in with the NVIDIA Shield, you have this kind of a plug, which, you know, that's not the nicest. Not a huge deal, but it's worth mentioning where you can see with the Apple TV, it's just the plug that slides right in the back. There's no power brick to deal with. So it's a little bit more of an elegant solution. I kind of like that. Uh, the first thing I want to mention is just on the picture quality, the both 4K boxes. Um, I originally got the Apple TV 4K because I thought, I was hoping it was going to be faster than my previous generation Apple TV, uh, but it's really not. And in terms of the picture quality be difference between the two, um, I have a BenQ 1080p projector in my basement here, which is where I'm filming. And um, uh, it's not 4K, so what I did, well, not what I did, but BenQ happened to email me and said, do I want to try out a 4K projector? I said, sure. And so I hooked it up here, I had to do some setup, but I mean, I could not tell any difference between the two boxes at all in 4K. Both, both boxes look great. I mean, um, Ultra HD, uh, Netflix, 4K movies you can get from the a Apple iTunes store are all going to look great. The problem with most of the streaming boxes, though, is almost all the apps will um, compress their content. So whether you're watching DirecTV or uh, YouTube TV, I mean, pretty much every single app compresses. It's kind of annoying that uh, more of these services don't offer like a premium option where you could just get a hot unlimited bit rate and just stream whatever quality you want, but that doesn't seem to be the way things are going. But in any event, in terms of picture quality, both boxes are going to give you, at least from my experience, the exact same thing in terms of color and HDR ability and sharpness overall. Any really 4K HDR TV you plug either of these boxes into is going to give you an awesome picture quality with only really very slight differences between the two. Now before I get into comparing the differences between the OS's on the two, I just want to quickly talk about the differences in the remotes. So in the NVIDIA Shield remote on the right, you can see it's a little bit longer and more uh, slender than the Apple TV. They're both about the same thinness, um, but the one uses a circular pad with a button in the middle, whereas the Apple TV on the left um, uses the trackpad and you depress the whole pad to press a button. They both have menu or back buttons. The menu and the back buttons operate the same. There's a microphone button for Siri, which I don't personally use uh, much except for, um, I, use, I do use voice input on Apple TV to enter passwords and stuff, but generally I don't use it for search. Um, and then you can 
pull up the you can pull up Google Home with Nvidia Shield because has a home built in, or Google Assistant I should say, and then the volume th there's a volume rocker on the Apple TV on the left which. I think the Shield has a better volume control, which is just the slide up and down you can see here. You just slide on the bottom of the remote. And it changes the volume a lot quicker than the Apple TV, so that's a little more convenient. So neither remote have a mute button, uh, unfortunately, which is, I think, really stupid. I hope in a future you know, firmware update they'll add a mute function, like maybe either double tap on the volume down button or something like that. Um, that would be nice. And then they both have a home or menu buttons that get you back to the main screen without having to back up through a bunch of menus. And just one thing to note about the battery is the Apple TV charges via a lightning cable. You can see you just plug it into the bottom and you'll get an on-screen notification when the battery is low. So you just recharge it and you only have to recharge this. I mean, I probably charge it once every three months or so. Um, but the NVIDIA Shield remote, for whatever reason, is not rechargeable. It uses two watch style batteries, which I think is a little bit of a weird choice. So it uses these two. So they probably last a lot longer, but when you do have to replace them, I would just prefer it be in charge of the USB-C. So um, I don't know why they went with that, but that's just something to notice. I think I give a slight advantage to the Shield remote. You'll notice here I put my Apple TV in a rubber case, and that is just because it's a little hard to wield without it. Um, and it lets me you know, just be able to throw the remote across the room and not care or whatever. And it's a little bit it's just easier to hold in general. But I will say that the NVIDIA Shield, the responsiveness of the remote is super quick. Part of it's to do with the OS of the Shield, which we'll get into just now. So I just wanted to give an overview of the general layout and look of the NVIDIA Shield and how the, it works. So what you see here is the main screen. It uh, shows you a lot of different content. And then in the very top, you have a click to speak. So you can use the Google Assistant or search for different things. You can also use the keyboard. You have a notification center uh, settings and then a clock in the upper right hand corner which is pretty useful. Um, then in the first row, in the main area of the content, is where you have all your apps. So you can add your favorite apps to this first row here. And you can add them just by clicking the Add app there for whatever apps you have downloaded. And of course, you can get apps from the App Store and search for them however you want. So that is the main top row there. And then underneath that, you have what's called Play Next. And this will queue up different things that you've been watching. You can also, also manually add things to the Play Next. So let's say you wanted to add uh, Sports Center as a Play Next thing. You can just, you just long press on the thumbnail and then click on Add to Play Next, and it will add it up there into the top row. So we can just do that now just to kind of show you what I mean. And then there it is. So it gives you real quick, easy access. So first row is your favorite app. Second row is all your Play Next stuff. And then all the rows underneath that is what are called, or what NVIDIA calls channels. And you can customize these channels to be essentially whatever you want based on what your apps offer. So you can see here I have a couple YouTube uh, channels. So this is the recommended channel. This is the YouTube trending channel. Uh, this is like the gaming channel. And you can customize these by going to the very bottom here, clicking on Customize Channels. And in the top section, you can add what apps are allowed to add things to Play Next. So you can select your sources, or you can remove the Play Next completely. So that's pretty customizable. And then, like I say, depending on the apps, you can add different types of channels. So the Google Play Movies, you can have it show featured movies, top-selling movies, top-selling TV shows. And each one of these will be its own row. Uh, so for example, as we were looking at YouTube, I like to see recommended and trending. You can also add sub your subscriptions channels um, or channels that you subscribe to. And that will just show, you know, for example, that will show you a row of all your subscriptions. So here's, like I say, recommended, um, trending. And then you can re re rearrange these however you like. Um, you know, you can sort them, move them up and down the list. You can, of course, remove them. If I can get back, and just by clicking off negative there, and it will remove it. As you can see, it disappeared. So that's like the basic functionality and layout. Um, it's a little bit of a different philosophy compared to the Apple TV, which I will show you. As in, this gives you a lot more content. I think. I personally think it's a better way of browsing content overall because it gives you a lot of different, it throws a lot of different types of content at you at once. So whereas Apple TV is a little bit more of a minimalist approach where it just shows you the apps and you have to go into each app to get to your content, here it does give you a little bit of a better way, I think, to browse and discover content. So I think that's a little bit of an advantage um, compared to the Apple TV. Now one thing I will say, with NVIDIA Shield is it does take a little bit, it's a little bit more of a learning curve. 
uh, to what you can and can't do. So for example, this play next is a little bit inconsistent. You can't always add to the play next row. So for example, if I wanted to add this, it won't let me add these certain Netflix uh, items, which is kind of annoying. And um, you know, the inconsistent user experience, I think, is a slight drawback, although I do think the overall presentation is a, is a little bit better. And there's a couple other inconsistencies actually as well in the UI. So for example, when you go to say something like Prime Video, um, and as I showed you earlier, there's a back and a home button on the remote or main screen button. But once you're a couple levels deep into the Amazon Prime Video app, let's say you want to back up. So I hit the back button, click it one more time, it'll bring the, me to the top row there. And then click it one more time, you would expect it to exit that, but it actually prompts you if you want to exit, which is a little bit weird to me. I would just expect to go out back without, you know, asking me. And, um, you know, not every app does that. So what I'm saying is it's a little bit inconsistent in the how the remote functions. And the Apple TV is always the same consistent. Like hitting back will get you to the main menu eventually always. So, um, and that's not the only thing. The other thing is like when you want to enter, let's say you want to enter uh, usernames and passwords for different apps. Like, so for example, in Netflix, let's just say, um, let me go ahead and sign out here. So I'll go ahead and sign out of Netflix. And you'll notice when I go in to enter my username and password, I'll be prompted here with what you can see is a crazy keyboard. And there's no option to enter input by voice. Whereas on the Apple TV, you'll always get the exact same consistent keyboard input. It will be a row of letters across the top. And I'll show you that when I get to Apple TV and you can always enter it via voice. So you hear with Netflix is one type of keyboard and then you'll go into like Prime Video and you'll get another type of keyboard. So that little bit inconsistent user experience, I, I think, you know, detracts a little bit from the just overall ease of use of the system. But again, it, once you get used to it, it's, uh, it's not too bad, but I do give a slight advantage there to the Apple TV. Now, one thing I will say that the NVIDIA Shield is much better than Apple TV is just in the speed. Like, look how quick I can fly through here. It never stutters or pauses. And if you hold down uh, a direction on the key on the remote, it will just scroll and scrub really quick. So, I mean, it blows away Apple TV in terms of speed. I've noticed with Apple TV, no matter what, it will always sometimes stutter, slightly hesitate a bit. Once in a while, it will freeze and lag for a second. So that becomes a little bit annoying. And I will say with the NVIDIA Shield, I've never experienced that. And so definitely an advantage there with the NVIDIA. Um, you can see also how fast it will launch things. So this is just my Plex server, just pulling up some Battlefield recordings that I have from my PC gameplay. And, you know, this is me dead. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to kind of show you how fast it launches and how fast you can get in and out of apps. The other thing is if you double click on the home button, it will pull up your um, launched apps and you can flip back and forth between each one. This is very similar to how the Apple TV works. And then you can close out your apps there too as you, as you like. The other thing I did want to also mention is with the streaming TV services, I'm not going to go into a big comparison here, but I will say I've used them all and I find YouTube TV is the best out there and I think it's the best out there by far. Of course, it depends on what channels you want. It might not have all the channels compared to s other systems, but I, f I find uh, the YouTube TV app is really nice. The reason why is because for one, uh, you can pause anything, um, any channel, and you can pause it for however as long as the as long as the program is is for. So if, if it's an hour long program, you can pause it for an hour. Whereas Directv, I think you, you can pause it for a couple minutes and it will keep skipping you forward. So really hate that. Um, it's really annoying. And um, the other thing on YouTube TV is if you go into the actual channel guide. It's the quickest and best channel guide I've ever seen on any TV system, streaming app, whatever. There's no freaking apps within the uh, TV channel guide, uh, which is annoying as hell when you see that with Comcast and DirecTV. It's really quick. Look how fast when I hold this down, you can fly, just fly through the whole list. It's an alphabetical order by channel. Um, you can scroll over really quick through the time as well to see what's upcoming. And it just gives you huge thumbnails, really simple, understand, super clean. And I, I really like that. So um, if you're wondering about different streaming TV services, I definitely recommend YouTube TV uh, pretty much over all others. Now, the other thing about the NVIDIA Shield is nowhere near as good of a screensaver for what it's worth. I'll show you the Apple TV one, which is really killer. Uh, but if you go in here and just look at the screensavers, it's basically just you can either have some colors pop up 
or the default one is just still pictures. Now the pictures are awesome, but it's nowhere near as cool as the 4K flyovers on the Apple TV. So let me show you that just now. So here we'll take a look at the Apple TV and you can see um, the layout of it. It's a lot cleaner. It's, it doesn't present you a bunch of content. It's basically just app icons and you click in each one to get to whatever content you're looking for. There is some additional functionality for apps you put in the very top row here, uh, but the app developer has to make use of it. So for example, Netflix, you can actually go up when you're hovered over it and select different shows. Same thing with Plex, but you can see also not every um, app takes advantage of it. So HBO Go just kind of shows splash screens. So a little bit more flexibility there, but nothing too great. But we'll say is the Apple TV does have an edge in usability overall just because the consistency is better. As I was showing you just here in the Prime TV, if you want to back out, and you can see it's even it's slightly slower than the NVIDIA Shield, but here you can just back out of the app just by hitting back and you'll be back to the front. Uh, so as I mentioned, you know, when you're entering uh, something, let's say, into the search function or let's say you want to um, you know, type something, you're always going to get this same exact keyboard layout. It's letters across and you can also just hold the mic button to dictate. And so you can always enter with your voice and it's always the exact same consistent. So there's little things like that throughout the UI that make the Apple experience a little bit easier to use. So I give you a slight edge there in terms of day-to-day uh, -day, uh, usability. I just put my apps in order of like how much I use it and the way you can just rearrange it by holding down um, the trackpad on one of the apps and you can either put them in folders as I have down here you can group a bunch of stuff in folders or you can just have them laid out like I do uh, but overall you can see this is a little bit more minimal look it's just apps and you can uh, double click on the home button and scroll through your apps and then just swipe up to close them out um, I also give the Apple TV a slight edge in terms of apps so for example for whatever reason the NVIDIA Shield doesn't have the DirecTV Now app, and um, you might not care about that if you don't use it, but um, in terms of App Store, the Apple TV is just going to have a lot uh, broader support, I, I feel like. And so that's the App Store. Now, of course, the NVIDIA Shield also has advantages in terms of games. Uh, you're going to have way more games because you can almost basically use the NVIDIA Shield as a, a gaming console, and there's, you can do all kinds of emulation and stuff. Um, the other final thing I want to say about the Apple TV is just in terms of the screensaver, if you hit the menu button, couple times it will get to these awesome drone footage shots um, and this is just great to have I, I usually just have this on if I'm not watching TV because it's kind of a cool thing to have on the backdrop this screensaver is really a killer function of the Apple TV I think especially compared to the Nvidia Shield which just shows you like the still photos um, so you can see here you can uh, slide or if you just like swipe over on the trackpad you can get different all kinds of different flyovers which is awesome and there's like Earth ones where it's satellite images from the globe, it's freaking really cool. So, and they add new ones like every couple weeks or every month or so. And there's just a ton of different ones in here. So, I think this gives the Apple TV a pretty big advantage over the Nvidia Shield. And it just depends on if you kind of like this thing or not. And finally, speaking of specific system advantages, there are a few other big considerations if you're trying to decide between these two boxes. The first one is whether you want to do a lot of gaming. The NVIDIA Shield offers a lot more in terms of gaming options with console style games, big name titles, and retro gaming using Nintendo and other gaming system emulators. It's really a big feature of the Shield device. You can even get console style controllers, whereas on the Apple TV, you are still going to have a lot of options for games, but just based on the limited remote, you aren't going to be able to be playing things like Fortnite on it. A second, if you plan on streaming your mobile device to one of these boxes, you like mirroring your phone to a bigger screen, then I think it makes sense to go with an Apple TV if you have an iPhone, or the Shield if you mainly use other devices. And finally, there's the voice control ability of the Shield and the ability to use it as a Google Assistant. Or if you're in the Amazon ecosystem, it actually offers some very convenient voice control abilities once you enable the Alexa skill. I found it to be extremely convenient to be able to do things like firing up my projector. Alexa, turn the TV on. Pausing and starting videos. Alexa, pause the TV. Muting the volume. Alexa, mute the TV. And turning off the TV system. Alexa, turn the TV off. All without having to find and grab the remote. 
I think overall the systems are very evenly matched, both with excellent 4K HDR quality, both support Dolby Atmos and other surround sound standards, and both streamers have various pros and cons to each. If I was starting from scratch, I think I'd go with an NVIDIA Shield, just the fact that it feels faster and more responsive and works really well with the Amazon Echo. I think I'm going to switch my streamer to a Shield, at least for my basement viewing, but the other TVs in my house, I think I'll stick with Apple. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll make sure I answer them. Thanks a lot for watching to the end. You guys take care. Thank <laughs> you.